Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and today we've got a kitchen table makeover. It has been about four months since Neiman and I moved into this house and we've gone that long without a kitchen table in our house. We finally found one a couple of months ago on one of our most epic thrift shop days, I guess you could say. Um, we went to a ton of thrift stores. You can catch that video up here. And we ended up finding this table at a Goodwill for just $40. I was looking for mid-century table. This one is super neat and I'll show you why here in a little bit, but it needs a little bit of love and refreshing. So we're gonna start by cleaning. I've got my towels here and then I am going to clean this guy with some simple green. And since I don't know what is on the table, that's why it's really important to clean. You know, it came from a thrift store from someone else's house on kitchen tables. Generally, you're eating on it. So there's probably some food residue. And even though I'm gonna be sanding a little bit later, I don't wanna grind any of that down into the surface. So that is why cleaning is essential to do in the first step. And so if we ever have more guests, we can always just extend the table just a little bit. You know, while it's just us two, we'll just have the smaller table, but I love that we don't have to find a spot for the leaves anywhere to hold them and that it's all built in as one table. I know it's gross, but I feel like it's important to show you guys every time how dirty pieces can be and how important it is to clean your piece before you do anything else. Here's the evidence. So the top of this table is very, it has a very failing finish, which means that basically some of the finish is coming off, has already come off, or is peeling away. And there are some very distinct areas that I wanna show you on the top of this table. So as you can see, there's some discoloring. So anywhere where it's not like the orangey or yellowy color, that means that the finish has failed and came off in those areas. And then also right over here, you can tell that it's kind of in the process as, of coming up because if I just take my finger go back and forth you can tell that that clear coat is coming off with just barely any pressure the so moral of the story is with the failing finish i need to get it off of the tabletop i cannot stain or paint with a failing finish because if the under surface is failing and i put one over it then that top surface is just going to start to fail as well so i am going to be using my surf prep sander usually i use the three by four which is like a more of a rectangular shape but this time i am going to be using the five inch orbital sander and I've got an 80 grit on there and I do have it connected to my dust extractor. If you don't have a dust extractor, that's okay, but you are gonna want to wear a mask so that you can protect any dust from going into your lungs. So I was hoping that the finish wouldn't be too hard to get through with my sander since it was failing, but it is a little bit hardened being just a little pesky. So I am going to whip out my carbide scraper. You guys have seen me use this a few times and I am just going to be scraping off the top 
finish. So basically the varnish, the clear coat, the top coat that they have put on to protect this table. And that is the kind of more chunky part of the, that like why it's so difficult to get through with the sander. So once I scrape that off, it should be a lot easier on me and on my sander to get through the finish. I do want to point out that when you are doing the carbide scraper, you want to go with the wood grain. So you're never going to see me going this direction because I can tell that the wood grain is going from side to side the long way. So I'll start at the edge or I'll start in the middle and I'll go off to the edge. Two hours of sanding so far, got this guy left. So I decided that I'm gonna be detaching the sides here so that I can sand in the areas that I can't reach um, where it is like coming together with the edge of the table. And also so that I can sand these pieces underneath because ultimately I thought I was gonna paint them, um, but since they'll kind of be going in and out of the slots here, I am gonna stain them the same as the tabletop instead of the same as the legs so that that paint doesn't like wear away over time. So I just need to get these three screws loosened up on each side and then this top of the table can come off so that I can sand it down. We flipped the table over so that I would have a little bit of a better angle at sanding the legs. The top whew, took me over two hours to sand down, more like three exactly actually. So now I am gonna be sanding the legs, but I'm not gonna sand them raw. I'm just gonna be scuff sanding them because my plan is to paint the legs and then stain the top. So I've got a sanding pad that's just fine. It's not an 80 grit because an 80 grit is to take the finish off. Um, so I've got probably about a 220 grit here. And I do have a little bit of a foam so that it can kind of go around and contour to my legs since it is a little bit curved. I don't want to straighten out that curve at all. So that will really help me keep that curve going on. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe back the dust on the legs after I scuff sanded them. And I like to do that just with a little bit of a damp microfiber cloth. The water helps it grab onto the dust, but then the microfiber part also is kind of sticky in itself. And so it'll really grab that dust and then make sure that there's none left behind for when we paint. I'm gonna use Lily Moon's Opulent paint and that is an all-in-one paint. So it's got that bonding primer, which is why I'm not priming these 
and then also the paint and the top coat all built in. I'm using the color Stargazer, which is a nice deep blue. So I'm excited to try this out on this table. We've got some other colors going on upstairs and I didn't want to overwhelm the space. We've got like a goldish color and then like a tealish color and some grays and some wood tones so i think that this will really match um and go well with those without being like oh my goodness you added another color so i am going to be brushing this on with my zebra brush it's a round brush because i figured that would be the best for the legs um the outsides of the legs are curved this brush is really good for spindles and curved areas like that also i do have my mister bottle just to help make the paint continue to be wet and not drag along my surface when i'm still painting it out with this paint you don't want to overwork it but if you use your mister bottle just a little bit then it'll allow you to get a nice paint stroke and have it have just a little bit of a longer period of time where it can level itself out instead of drying too quickly you can spray it on your surface and on your brush kind of help your paint go a little bit farther Time for coat number two. Time for the top of the table. I ended up doing three coats total on the legs. That second coat just didn't quite get enough coverage. And so on the top here, I've still got the sanding dust on it. So I'm gonna wipe it back just like I did on the legs with my damp microfiber cloth. And then I'm gonna be using a water-based gel stain. It is my go-to gel stain right now. And I'm gonna be using the color Tennessee Whiskey because that is the same color that I used on the base of our media center that's right next to where this table is going to go. So I figured I should use the same tone of wood up there so that again, too many wood tones aren't clashing together and competing because the floor in there is already a different color. So once I've got all of my dust wiped back, then I'm going to lightly mist the entire table. Once my whole surface is dampened, I am going to squirt some Tennessee Whiskey gel stain on there. And this is by Lily Moon Paint as well, same as the paint that I used. And you can use my code FFT10 for 10% off. All the links will be down below. They have a great product line that I highly recommend. I've kind of said in the past that I like to work in sections, but then I remember that I really don't like to work in sections because it can, like in the overlap areas, it can get dark and it will just be super uneven. So basically I'm gonna cover the entire table, trying to work pretty quickly so that it doesn't dry in certain areas. But I can use my mister bottle to help me keep things wet. 
I'm just using a chip brush to spread out my gel stain. That is kind of what I like to use. You could also use a paintbrush, but basically we're just painting it on. I'm not really worrying about the edges right now. We're kind of sticking with the top first. I also made sure to go the same direction as the wood grain the entire time. And that'll be especially important when I'm wiping back all of the excess. I just like to take a lint-free cloth here and go in the same direction as the wood grain and wipe back all that excess gel stain that hasn't yet penetrated the wood. This is when you could kind of bring it down to the edges your excess that's on your bag. Decided to bring the table inside so that I could finish it off and I'm gonna go ahead and attach the leaves and then do a top coat. Time for top coat. You guys know this by now, but depending on what your piece is being used for, sort of depends on if you need to do a top coat or not, especially with products that have it built in. So the Lily Moon stain actually has a top coat built in, so it technically would be okay to just leave as is, but this is gonna be a tabletop and I really don't want any types of stains or scratches to happen on this because there'll be a little bit of traffic here on the daily. So I am going to use Lily Moon's top coat and this is gonna give it just a little bit of a low luster sheen, but it will allow it to be protected as well. And I'll probably do probably two to three top coats on this uh, just for that utmost protection. My go-to application tool for the top coat is this blue sponge. Sometimes I totally forget about it because I'm either spraying or I don't use top coat for a while but I have recently remembered that this is the almighty top coat applicator. So I just put some top coat inside of a different container that is just easier for me to dip this into. Like I could dip it in here, but it would just be like super tight. So I'll just dump a bit into here after I've stirred it up really well and there's no chunks. And then I'm going to dip that in there a lot easier than it would be to dip in here. All right, from what I can see, we've got the whole thing covered with the first layer of top coat. We'll let that dry and come back for number two. 
All right, so I decided to use the Gator Hide from Dixie Belle for the second coat. This is just gonna give me utmost protection. It is um, water resistant and repellent, so I thought that that would be perfect for a kitchen table. I'm gonna use the same exact method that I used with the other top coat with the Gator Hide. Amen. Sending me, oh my gosh. I've been looking for chairs for this table because as of right now, I don't have any. He just sent me a Facebook marketplace listing with four Haywood Wakefield chairs. You guys gotta see this. Oh my gosh. It looks like they need a little bit of some love. $100 for them. And look, they're blue, just like the table legs. I might, I would maybe reupholster them. I gotta inquire about these. We gotta go check these out. 